Well, welcome to worship, everyone. As always, it is an honor to be able to be here with you all. Um, for whatever reason, if you don't know me, I'm Reverend Craig Yoshihara, and I am fortunate enough to be the pastor at Berkeley Methodist United Church. So I know it's been a while now since we've actually met in person, um, but that doesn't stop us from being the church. And I am just glad that you all have participated and have joined in so that we can share in this time together. We've got a couple of things going on. Uh, one, we are going to be in follow-up to the discussion on racism that Mary helped to lead um, a couple weeks ago. There is a forum on how to be an anti-racist. Uh, you saw that in the, in the announcements this morning. And um, so there'll be a discussion, or I'm sorry, there'll be a virtual presentation on Monday, the 21st, 20th, sorry, Monday, the 20th. And the next night on Tuesday, the 21st, we will have uh, an open discussion forum that Mary will help lead. Um, and so we want to invite you to take part. There's going to be details on our website. I'm going to finish that up today and post it. Um, so please check in to, to find out more about it. You just have to sign up for the uh, for the discussion on on Monday, so you'll get an invitation, and then um, just join us on Tuesday and and share your thoughts about about what you heard. Um, also, there is a district choir project that is happening. Naomi has been asked to be one of the leaders. She is going to be in charge of the music. And you already know that uh, Naomi is very talented in that department. So I'm going to ask her to share a little bit more about what's going on with that. So Naomi. Thanks, Reverend Craig. Good morning, everyone. Yeah, I just want to briefly um, let you know um, one of the projects, you know, as you know, every week we work on the project of our, our services and bringing great music to you. And I've also been working with um, our friend, Reverend Mike Friedrich, Pastor Emily Lynn over at Twin Towers, and this wonderful technical director, um, a person who knows how to make those awesome videos with everyone singing and all the music synced up. Um, and so the four of us um, have been discussing how we can bring all our churches together and all of our, you know, enthusiastic singers um, on this project. And so if you want to kind of get started on sort of familiarizing yourself, um, if you're interested in this, um, the song that we're going to do is called Rise Up. And this is definitely in response to um, Black Lives Matter and just all the issues that, you know, we've been facing, um, especially lately. I mean, it's been ongoing, but I think that this is our district response um, to that to that particular issue. So I encourage you to get to know this really powerful song. If you are a member of our choir, of course, I think this is going to be an awesome opportunity to get to try out and be part of one of those cool videos that we've all been enjoying together, knowing that you have the support. You have, you're going to have um, tracks laid down by our own Nomi and Iman and Stephanie. A wonderful pianist is on board to play our track for us. His name is Thaddeus Pinkston, and you'll get to meet him um, eventually. And also over from Twin Towers, a great um, singer named Israel is going to also be one of our um, one of our teachers on how to you know learn the music. So all this material is going to be available to you if you can mark July twenty second Wednesday. Well, it's going to be a busy week. Maybe that's just plan to have like a big. Um, camp week where you're gonna you know go to the forum on the 20th and the 21st and then get ready to just hear about the vision of the virtual choir on a zoom that we're gonna have at Wednesday night 7 p.m. I know it's during social time but um, just for that one night we'll have a meeting so that we can really share and you can just kind of find out more about this virtual choir so you're all invited to come and check that out and of course certainly BMU singers I hope to see you there Thanks a lot, Naomi. Appreciate it. So um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, email Naomi directly. You can email me if you'd like to, and then I'll just email Naomi. Um, but anyway, uh, please feel free to ask any questions you have, but we hope to see you there. Uh, from what Naomi tells me, it doesn't sound like you have to have tons of experience 
at doing any of this. That's one of the nice things is that it's a virtual choir for beginners. So um, we just want your voice. So we'd love to have you take part. As we begin worship, I'm gonna turn things over to Cheryl now. Uh, Cheryl is our worship leader this morning. And so I wanna introduce you to her, Cheryl. Morning. <laughs> Uh, please join me in the opening prayer. <clears throat> Dear Lord, we gather today in gratitude, grateful for the opportunity to be together again, whether on Zoom or Facebook or in spirit, to worship you. We are grateful for the beautiful day that you've given us and the opportunity to do your will. Please open our hearts and minds to the words we'll hear today. Please help us to remember that like the San Francisco Giants or the Golden State Warriors championship teams, where you can't just win it all with Mad Bum and Posey or Steph and KD. Our church, our community, our world needs all of us, all of our hearts, hands, and feet. Excuse me. We are all integral and important. Help us to use our individual gifts to better serve our team. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, I did forget to mention one uh, one more announcement, which was um, some of our friends from Lake Merritt UMC will be joining us next week. So in one of the fun aspects of having virtual is that it's really easy for other churches to join us. Um, so Pastor Pam over at Lake Merritt is going to be on vacation. So she asked if some of her folks uh, could come and worship with us. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how many. So they've been given a couple of options on how they are able to worship next week. But if you see some strange new faces, um, please reach out and say hi. And, and uh, hopefully that we will help to share uh, the spirit of Christ with them uh, when they come to visit us. I'm going to turn things over to Naomi, who's going to introduce you to our opening song this morning. One second here as I scroll. There we go. Naomi. Our opening song this morning is traditionally, has traditionally been, become to be known as the African American National Anthem. It is Lift Every Voice and Sing. And I know that all of us are possibly very familiar with this. It's actually part of our Methodist hymnal. So um, it kind of really encompasses um, a lot of cultures and as well as um, just a lot of a lot of I think what's in our hearts. So I hope you will join us in singing Lift Every Voice.
Well, this morning as we enter into our time of prayer, uh, I want to remind everyone that we definitely want to lift up the things that are on your hearts. So if you would type them into the chat box um, so that we can lift them up, that would be great. That would give us an opportunity then to be able to be in prayer for you, specifically for whatever is most uh, troubling to you. Um, wanted to lift up a prayer for um, my daughter, Emma, and our little dog, Yoda. So uh, we're having to say goodbye to Yoda. He is going to go to a, a, a new family today. And so um, it's a little bit hard on Emma. And, and although Yoda doesn't know it, it'll be hard on Yoda. So if you just lift up a prayer, especially for Emma, um, during this time, uh, I know our family would appreciate it. So Lord, hear our prayers. Also wanted to uh, lift up Bishop Sano um, and his whole family today. I don't know if, if you've heard, but Bishop Sano's sister passed away this week. Um, she passed away peacefully. She was 90, 95, 90, 95 years old. Um, and he, he said that the, the family was um, doing well, but I know Bishop Sano would appreciate us keeping him in our prayers as well as everyone else in their family too. So Lord, hear our prayers. Um, we also want to lift up uh, the uh, Akagi family. Um, Wayne offered thanks for everyone's support during this time. Uh, I know that most of you already know that, that Bessie had passed. And so we just want to continue to keep um, all of her family in our prayers at this time. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, oh, oh yeah, that's right. Yay. I'm oh, sorry. Sometimes I read them before I actually say them. And so you're just hearing, hearing it live. Uh, but uh, my friends, uh, Andrea and John, your cousin Jenny uh, donated a kidney this week. I'm, she wasn't, it wasn't even to a family member. It was because she just felt like it was the right thing to do. And so she became part of a chain of 12 people. And so because of her actions, 12 other people are going to end up getting a kidney that they need. Uh, having Personally, being a person of chronic kidney disease, uh, to me, that's really heroic. I mean, even though we don't need two kidneys, most people have trouble giving them up. So um, thankfully, she's doing well. And, and recovering well. So just continue prayers for her recovery and for her sacrifice. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, um, some of you know that uh, um, Lindsay's um, Auntie Yuki uh, had, been in, had been hospitalized after following a stroke, um, but she ended up passing away last night. So that's uh, Mato's sister-in-law. So if you would please keep uh, the Haraska family in your prayers um, at this time and all those who knew that, um, Lindsay's Auntie Yuki, you know, just continue to just lift them up. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Pauline asked us if we can keep in prayer all those who are in nursing homes. Thankfully that her mom and aunts are still asymptomatic, but uh, as, as you know, they've had an outbreak at the nursing home that they're staying at. So let's just continue to keep them in prayer as well as all those who are serving them. Uh, I remember Pauline telling us that a lot of the staff also has come down with COVID. Um, and so just if we can keep all of them in our prayers, Lord, hear our prayers. Mary wanted to lift up thanks to God. Her nephew Jordan is doing well. He's home and recovering uh, from COVID after being in the hospital. So that, as always, is great news. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, for Greg's uh, friend Francis, whose mom passed away from COVID-19, I keep hearing more stories about people passing away. And, and so this is a really, it's a very real problem. Let's please not forget that. Lord, hear our prayers. 
Uh, Lee asks if we can continue praying for Bob, um, a lifelong friend who right now is home on oxygen, but is also suffering from COVID-19. So this is, she tells us this is the fourth week of illness for him. So let's just continue to keep him in prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, Jill wanted to lift up the, the founders of Dharma Nogako. Um, as you know, with our building being closed down, really there's, this will be the first year in forever that they're not able to, to hold um, the summer camp that they've had for so many years. So just want to keep them in prayer as they continue on and hopefully that uh, next year there'll, there'll be options that they are able to hold it. So Lord, hear our prayers. Um, Mary wanted to remind us um, that there's so many people on the front lines, not just the folks in the hospitals who of course, uh, are on our hearts and our minds, but people who are serving in grocery stores, on farms, in meatpacking plants, who are making it possible to supply us during this pandemic, that if we can keep all of them in prayer, Lord, hear are our prayers. Let us go ahead and let's bow our heads together in prayer as we are reminded of all of these things. Um, let's pray. Gracious God Almighty, we just asked for your loving presence around us during this time. We have been trying to deal with all the different things that are surrounding um, our society right now, not just, the, not just COVID-19, which is foremost on our minds, but also issues of, of racial injustice, of... Um, of our government, uh, of, of upcoming elections. We've got just so many huge, important things that affect the lives of millions of people that are weighing us down. And we just need to surrender them to you. We need to just know that there is only so much we can do and release the rest to you. We need to be inspired to do what we can. We need to be encouraged to help our brothers and sisters in the world out, whether it's those who are suffering from COVID-19 or those who are suffering from social injustice or those who are just hoping for a brighter future. That you would inspire us to do what we can individually and as a community. But then for the things that we do not have control over, for the things that we, that are beyond our capability, to surrender them to you and to ease that burden from us so that we can be our best selves, that we can love those around us as best we can. We want to lift up to you, Lord, all these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So we have a, a fun and um, I just, yeah, a fun and different song for you this morning uh, as part of our special music. And I'm going to invite Naomi to share a little bit about that today. Today, Naomi. Yes. Well, uh, one of the topics that we were looking at today was unity and um and sharing that unity together. So I think you're gonna really enjoy Greg as our soloist uh, leading us in this really fun rendition of a song that I think is very familiar to all of us. Since we're all muted, you can, you know, consider singing along with them on the chorus, but I think you're gonna like this one. It's called Stand By Me.
Not working the way it's supposed to. There we go. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon. It's the only light we'll see No, I won't be afraid Oh, I won't be afraid Just as long as you stand Stand by me So darling, darling, stand by me Oh If the sky that we look upon should tumble and fall, or the mountain should crumble to the sea, I won't cry, I won't cry, no, I won't shed a tear, just as long as you stand, stand by me, so darling, darling, stand by me, oh, stand by me, oh, stand, stand by me, stand by me. That was really nice. That was a lot of fun too. I really liked uh, Greg and Stephanie swaying during the the piano solo. That was cool. Um, as you know, this is a time when we are able to offer up our our gifts to God, and so I'm gonna ask Cheryl if she would please lead us um, in a prayer during our time of offering. Cheryl, please be, uh, please join me again in prayer. Christ in heaven, we are very grateful for all the blessings you have given to us. Our ability to breathe, our families, our friends, our pets, and an abundance of food to eat and homes to live in. We give you thanks for all that you have given to us. Today we offer our gifts to you, be it through service or advocacy or through money. We pray that these gifts will be used to make our church, our communities, and world a better place, ones that will honor you. In Christ's name we pray, amen.
Uh, today's scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 21 through 26. And I'll be reading out of the New International Version of, my, of his word. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with, us, with it. Praise be to God for his holy word. Amen. Life is a team sport. Nobody does anything completely on their own. We triumph or we fall in the midst of those who surround us. We're made stronger or weaker by the people who share our journey. And those who stand up at the end do so because of the work of many hands coming together. Life is a team sport. Think about this because in about two weeks, baseball is about to begin. Personally, I'm excited. I'm not sure how that's all going to turn out in our COVID-19 world. But three of the four major league sports are starting to ramp up and are going to begin soon. Baseball is going to have this incredibly shortened mad dash of a season. They, they've shortened their schedule by like 100 games. So we'll see how that goes. The NBA and the NHL are going to follow like a week later, both trying to close out seasons that were interrupted by the pandemic and then start the next season uh, almost immediately. I'm still, still skeptical about how wise it is to play sports during a pandemic um, or how all that's gonna work out. And at the same time, I'm really grateful that people are trying to give us some sense of normalcy, even though this is anything but a normal time. The, um, the number of people that it's gonna take to pull this off is tremendous. And I don't mean just the players or even the coaches, uh, but the hundreds if not thousands of people in the background, most of whom we'll never know, who are making it possible to actually have these sports televised so that the rest of us can watch it. I mean, they're all playing in empty stadiums. And so it's really for the benefit of, of those of us sitting at home. There's going to be hundreds, if not thousands of people whose hidden hands and feet make it possible for us to view all of this stuff. And their names are never going to be seen on a trophy. Their names are not going to be listed in the paper. But they're important nonetheless. The truth is that any measure of success requires a cast of many who are often unseen, but without whom we would not be able to do all that we do. Like at a, a I don't know how many of you have been to like a Broadway musical, but the actors on stage get pretty much most of the glory. And yet, Without the orchestra in the pit, uh, these musicals wouldn't even happen. You know, we, we tend to focus on what we see right before us, but there's so many other elements, the, the stagehands, the prop director, the lighting crew that make it possible for us to enjoy the things we enjoy. And that's true, not just in sports, but in pretty much every organization on the planet. We all need somebody to help us be successful. So how can we be somebody? 
Now, if you have a Bible or a Bible app on your phone, we're going to read together this morning from the Old Testament. And from the book of Ezra, chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. In fact, we're going to read the whole chapter 1. It's a pretty short chapter. When I think about the history of our church in particular, BMUC, there are a lot of people who helped us be where we are today. People whose names and faces you may not know at all. BMUC is built upon the work of hundreds, if not even more, people who came together to make this church a reality. And I'm not even talking about the parents and grandparents of our members or the ministers or youth leaders of our past. But we had a number of allies who journeyed alongside us in times of our greatest need. Some of them are known, some of them are unknown, but all have been like Cyrus to our church. So you might be asking who or what is Cyrus? Cyrus was the king of Persia back in about 560 BC, and he reigned for 30 years. Um, Cyrus was not a follower of the Hebrew God. He was a self-avowed pagan, but without whom, I don't know where we would be today. So hear now the words of the Lord. Reading from Ezra, beginning with chapter 1, verse 1. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and to put it in writing. And this is what Cyrus, king of Persia, says. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem in Judah and build the temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, the God who is in Jerusalem, and may their God be with them. And in any locality where survivors may now be living, the people are to provide them with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, and with free will offerings for the temple of God in Jerusalem. Then the family heads of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and Levites, everyone whose heart God had moved, prepared to go up and build the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors assisted them with articles of silver and gold, with goods and livestock, with valuable gifts, in addition to all the farewell offerings. Moreover, King Cyrus brought out the articles belonging to the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of his God. Cyrus, king of Persia, had, had them brought by Mithridath, the treasurer, who counted them out to Shebazar, the prince of Judah. And this was the inventory. 30 gold dishes, 1,000 silver dishes, 29 silver pans, 30 gold bowls, 410 matching silver bowls, 1,000 other articles. In all, there were 5,400 articles of gold and silver. Shesh Bazar brought all these along with the exiles when they came up from Babylon to Jerusalem. Word of God for the people of God, and the people said, thanks be to God. Cyrus restored the temple to the people of Jerusalem. And it, it's, this is a monumental event in the life of the people of Israel. It's monumental. Not only did he restore the temple, not only did he encourage people to give free will offerings for the building of the temple, but then he returned all of the stuff that had been taken by the previous king, King Nebuchadnezzar. He returned it to the Jewish people. He hadn't been converted. He was still a pagan. Uh, he wasn't trying to be patronizing, but he had genuinely felt, Cyrus had genuinely felt God's call in his life to do something for the Hebrew people. Nothing short from an edict from the king would have made this possible. No one would have built a temple to honor some foreign god had not the king allowed it. 
But Cyrus, having been moved by God, was an incredible ally to the Jewish people. We all need allies. And Cyrus is an example of, of what it means to be an ally. We all need people to walk alongside us to help make our dreams a reality. We don't do any of this on our own. Even a, a singles tennis player, right, seems to be like the, the most solitary sports athlete out there. It's just them and another player. But they never stand on the court alone. You know, along with them are parents and guardians who took them to practice when they were kids, who bought them rackets and sleeves of balls. Their coaches are with them. The coaches who instructed them from the time they were little kids to the time they were professionals, who helped build up their confidence and their skills. People they never even knew or mentioned or met, who supported the sport, who paid for coaches um, to, to be in high schools, people who saw value in donating toward the US Open or the um, or Wimbledon, or the French Open. People who bought tickets, who, who just, who provided scholarships so that athletes could go to another level. So when you see someone like Serena Williams, who's a naturally gifted athlete, who honed her skills to become one of the greatest players in the world, even she didn't make the journey alone. And neither do we. Our church would not be in existence without allies outside the J community. It's easy to forget how much we rely on the goodwill of others. And in this time, it seems almost unpopular to, to show support and love for people who are outside of your tribe. But there have always been people who stepped up when others would not. And we would not be here without those people. There have always been people that God called to serve our community despite the prejudice of the society around them. And because of those people, our church exists today. Uh, Mrs. Wilson of the Congregational Church in San Francisco offered to help out a group of newly arrived immigrant students from Japan over a hundred years ago. And even though her church would not allow them to worship in their space because they were foreigners. Mrs. Wilson and her group of women missionaries came up with money to help um, secure them a place to live. And that place was at the Chinese Methodist Mission. Dr. Otis Gibson, who ran the Chinese Mission, um, opened up the doors to this group of immigrant students and others. And if it weren't for Dr. Gibson noticing in one of them this particular gift for reaching out, I don't know if we would be here today. He saw in young um, Kenichi Miyama a fire and a passion for Christ that was very much like John Wesley. And he, he nurtured that, encouraged that, and tutored him, helped him to learn about Christ. And then not only did Miyama form the first Japanese gospel society, which would later become the foundation for every JA church in existence, but he was then sent by the bishop to Hawaii to start Christian work there among the Japanese who had immigrated to the islands. Harris United Methodist Church is the first and foremost JA church in Hawaii founded under Methodism. And that was due to, to Miyama and his outreach, which was possible because of Dr. Gibson. And of course, Dr. Frank Herring Smith, who our sanctuary is named after, I don't know how many of you know this incredible person 
who sacrificed so much for our community. But he himself had been a missionary to Japan. And when he returned, um, was asked to be in charge of these fledgling churches. And because he knew the culture and because he knew the Japanese people, he appealed to their sense of duty and honor and encouraged them to, to become self-sufficient. Up until then, every Japanese church relied on the conference to, to exist. They didn't have enough money on their own. So the conference supplied the money for the pastors and for the buildings and for the rent. And it was only after the encouragement of Dr. Smith that the JA churches took over their own funding. And within the first six years, six of those churches became completely self-sufficient. When the Japanese were sent to the internment camps, Dr. Smith went from camp to camp and mentored and preached and visited the sick and did whatever he could for those that were stuck. Outside the camp, he would go from church to church to make sure that the churches were being maintained. He found people to rent the parsonages and to keep the parsonages intact. When insurance companies would drop policies because, of, because they were owned by Japanese people, Dr. Smith mortgaged his own house and helped to fund the, the insurance that was necessary to keep the churches afloat. He was such a strong advocate for the Japanese people, and not just Japanese Christians, but Japanese um, in America, that he was often called the white Jap. And for any of those of you know, that's an extremely derogatory term, it's an insult. But he had such a passion for helping the Japanese people who he thought were wrongly interned. In fact, he was such a great influence in the JA community that he, he personally influenced a number of ministers who a lot of you know. Uh, Reverend Lloyd Wake, Reverend Dr. Lester Suzuki, Bishop Roy Sano are just a few of those who were inspired by him. I, I was reading in a book, they did an interview with uh, Irene's dad, Lester Suzuki, and Reverend Suzuki said, Smith had sized up the Japanese population in the U.S. and figured that there was a need for 500 trained Nisei ministers and workers to take care of the population. He said, to me, it was a real ringing challenge. Even when he came to the local churches, he mentioned the same thing to our official boards and our local church administrator meetings. I heard him repeat this several times. That's what got me. I wasn't a baptized Christian then, but became one very soon after that. That's the kind of influence people like Dr. Smith had. He wasn't of Japanese ancestry, but he stood with us nonetheless. In our time of racial unrest, it's really got me thinking, how can we be an ally in this time? How can we stand alongside the black community as we all strive toward social justice and to get rid of racial inequality? How can we be a supporter beyond just putting a banner up on our church? I had a conversation through email with uh, our own DS, Reverend Stacy Curran, and together with Reverend Sadie Stone, we, we talked about it. And while I realize that, that it's not the job of the Black community to tell us what to do, that the most well-intentioned people have often imposed their own cultural values and norms upon another group of people. You know, the earliest missionaries, when they went out to preach the word of God, um, went to places like Africa and Asia and with, with the best of intentions, told them how they were doing it all wrong and imposed upon them a, a Western lifestyle. And so a lot of their traditions and cultural richness 
was inadvertently stripped away. And, and they're looking to reclaim those, those things that, that are missing. We want to be careful as we strive to be good allies to not do the same thing. Our goal is to walk alongside our brothers and sisters, not to tell them where to go. Our goal is to walk alongside our brothers and sisters, not to tell them where to go. So Dia, Stacy, and, and Sadie suggested that every community, not just ours, but every community do soul searching on their own. Some real serious introspection about the ways that we perpetuate systemic racism, the ways in which we unconsciously support racist ideologies or racist language through our own perceptions, our own unwillingness. And to really hold up a mirror and ask how welcoming are we to people who don't act or behave the way we do. So before we reach out, we also have to look within or at the same time as we reach out, we have to look within. So we're gonna be looking for ways to do that. And I know that Angel and, uh, and Mary together led a discussion a few weeks ago. So we wanted to follow that up with another way to explore some of the challenges we have in being anti-racist. So on July 20th at seven o'clock, there's gonna be uh, a, a virtual conversation with uh, author Ibram, Ibram X. Kendi who wrote the book, How to Be an Anti-Racist. And right now, it's one of the foremost books that people have been recommending. And so if you want to read it, that's great. If you want to just take part in the discussion or just hear what people have to say, that's awesome also. And, and I will send out a link to that, um, not only on our Facebook page, but on uh, in the weekly email and on our own website. Um, and that should be live this evening. Afterward, the next day on Tuesday at seven o'clock, we're going to have a follow-up discussion. We hope that you'll join in. Mary's going to lead that discussion, and we're going to explore the emotions and responses to everything that we heard. And hopefully, we'll have ongoing discussions about who we are and how we can be better than we are already. But I know during this time of introspection, we want to do something concrete. Something we can point to and say, we made a difference. So over the next month, I'm gonna challenge our council and ministries to do just that, to put our money where our mouth is, quite literally. In my discussion with Reverend Stacy, um, she mentioned she went to a, a forum with Camus uh, Bell and, and an author who, who uh, someone brought up the very same question and said, what can I do concretely to help the black community. And, and the author said, um, give black people money. And everyone laughed because it seemed like a funny response. But she said, I'm serious. That if you're serious about helping the black community, then you need to do it in substantial ways, not just talking about it. That it's important to stand up and, and protest and sign petitions and things like that. But it's just as, it's just as important to literally support the black community. So I'm gonna challenge us to do that, um, do something concrete. And whether that's uh, offering a scholarship or donating to a local black business or contributing to a, a primarily black church in our neighborhood, that I want us to do something, maybe do all of those things. In the meantime, you can help too. I'm gonna to challenge each one of you to support a black owned business in your local community. And I'm gonna, uh, on Yelp there, they have all these resources about different black owned businesses. And so I'm, I'm gonna post that link. Um, I'm also gonna put it on our webpage and you can pick someone who's local to you and contribute. You know, make a concerted effort to specifically support those black owned businesses. Frequent those places uh, during the next month and beyond. Over tip when you can, make the extra effort to be supportive, 
to walk alongside our neighbors in their time of need as others have done for us. There's a tendency for us to demonize those who aren't one of us. We tend to be critical of people who act and look different than ourselves. But if we're ever going to achieve true justice and equality, we're going to need allies. We're going to need people outside of ourselves who are willing to stand up against the grain and say, this is wrong. We're going to need people to take concrete actions to not just protest in our name, but to help us. And, and I think of people like Dr. Smith. In those times when there were so many racist attitudes, when people of Japanese ancestry were not just looked down upon, but were actively worked against, when we were called the most horrific things and accused of the most horrific things, there would have been no way that back in those days I would have been allowed to, to marry Cassie. Not only her family, but her church would not have allowed me to do those things. So I am so grateful that there have been people who have been willing to stand up and say, that's wrong. And how can we do that? How can we be an ally in times of greatest need? None of us can do it alone. We are stronger together and we need one another. We need to be the body of Christ. When I watch those athletes return to the field this month, when I watch my, my first game on TV, I'm gonna remember that there are, are hundreds if not thousands of people behind them that I will never see and that I will never know, but without whom none of this would have been possible. The same is true in our fight for racial justice, that it will take thousands, if not millions of us to make it really happen. So I pray that we will be among those people. The iron is hot and the time to do something is now. Make a difference. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, I'm going to turn things over to Naomi as she introduces our final song uh, for, the, for the day. Uh, Naomi, if you'd like to, to share what we're about to hear. Thank you, Reverend Craig. It's a powerful, powerful message. Um, and our song today, I think, is a prayer to encourage us and to help us to plead with God to just help us have the strength and to take those steps that we need to. Um, I also want to, before we hear our song, thank um, everyone who helped us make this service happen. Um, we always want to thank Reverend Craig and thank Jill and Tack and thank Cheryl for being such a great worship leader for us today. And then, of course, our music, our music crew, we heard today from Irene and Vicki and Greg and Stephanie. And I'm not sure if this is on your bulletin, but um, you're going to hear a really um, great song leader of ours, CJ, as he leads us in this song, Make Us One Lord. And so I just really encourage you to take this music in and use it as a way to help you find you know, the ways that you are going to step forward and support and be an ally. And um, I think this song is a great way to send us off for the beginning of the week. So this is CJ leading us in Make Us One Lord.
May our Lord God in heaven, who brings us together, inspire us to journey alongside those who need us, to accept help when we need it, to just be the hands and feet of Christ in the world today. Help us, Lord, to be that body of Christ that we read about. And so as we journey forth today, let it be with the love of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in our heart, now and always. Amen.